Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to use the calculator to find the intercepts and some end behaviors of certain functions, all right? So let's take a look at an example, two examples actually. So it asks us, what are the intercepts and the end behaviors of the following functions? So first let's focus on the first one. f of x, right, or aka y, equals x cubed multiplied by then x minus 2. So what we're going to do, first take this thing and plug it on into the calculator. So go to your y equals button. Assuming you have a ti, 80 something or other, but almost the majority of people do. So hopefully you do, and if not, your steps might be slightly different, but I think you should be able to figure it out. So we got x uh, cubed, so we're going to do x raised to the 3, then hit your over button to bring the cursor back down, open the parentheses, and then just do x minus 2. Close those parentheses, okay? Now all you want to do from here is just, just hit graph. Just hit graph for the time being. Now... What I would do also, now your graph might not look like this. I don't know what your window looks like, but you can go to window and, oh, excuse me, zoom, sorry, go to zoom and then hit number six for zoom standard, okay? And now it should kind of look like this, all right? And I think I'm going to actually then zoom in. So just go to two, zoom in, hit two, and then hit enter. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. Now, basically the idea here is what we need to do, we got two important points on this graph. Okay, a tech, uh, yeah, two important points for this particular one. We have a very important point right at this location, and we have another very important point right at this location. Now, you could argue that there could be other points of interest as well, like points of inflection and minimum, you know, uh, certain minimums and stuff. But for this problem specifically, to determine the intercepts, when they mean intercepts, they it's multiple x and y, all right, x and y intercepts. These are going to be the two uh, important points, okay? So what we now need to do is we need to uh, utilize the calculator in order to help us determine these values, all right? So let's go to now uh, second, okay, let's hit second and go to calc. Now what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm going to solve for is my y-intercept, all right? So select choice number one, hit enter. Now what this is going to do is you can plug in any x value you like, and what's gonna happen is the calculator is gonna tell you what the y value was, all right? Now, the key characteristic here of the y-intercepts, and this you definitely wanna memorize, so I'll write this over here, that y-intercept, the coordinates, I should say, the coordinates of the y-intercept will be zero comma something, okay? This is for the y-intercept. Now, you know that x will be zero. Every time you got the y-intercept, x will always be zero. All right, so we're trying to find out what y is. That's the whole point. So just take now, go back to the calculator, plug in zero for x and just hit enter. And look, it gives you that y value. When x is zero, okay, y is zero. Whoops, all right, let's go second calc again. Sorry about that, just type in zero and bada bing bada boom, y is zero, okay? So the y intercept then for this first function, and if you almost, if you look at the graph here, right, doesn't that look like the case? the y-intercept is going to be equal to zero, okay? Cool, and you can also just give the coordinates of that point, you can just write zero comma zero, all right? So what I'm gonna do is let me move this on over for the time being, so we got that the y-intercept was going to be zero comma zero. Now let's find the x-intercepts. So it turns out that the uh, graph crosses the x-axis now in two places it actually crosses the x-axis at the same place that it's gonna cross the y-axis, okay? But let's not make that assumption. Let's go back to the calculator and see what we can do, all right, to solve that. So go to second calc again. Now though, what you gotta do is you gotta go to zero. And basically what this is going to help us solve for, it's going to help us solve for the x-intercepts, okay? Now, it's gonna ask you, the calculator is gonna say, go left bound. Left bound of what? Well, left bound of the location where the graph intersects the x-axis. So the graph intersects the x-axis right here in the middle, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your cursor just to the left of that point, hit enter. Then it's gonna ask you to go right bound. So now you go, bring it all the way to the right, da 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 do 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 right, bring it all the way to the right, hit enter, okay? So, and you don't have to be precise about this, just go a little left, a little right, that's all you need to do. And then it's gonna say guess. So what that means is make your best guess as to where the uh, function is, you know, crossing the x-axis. You do not have to be exact. I do have the exact value here, but watch, if I'm a little off, let's say I'm, I'm there, okay? 
No big deal. The calculator is still going to calculate it. Watch. Hit enter. Oh, look. It found it anyway. Now, you might say, well, nah, did it really? Did it really? Look what X is. It's 1.129 times 10 to the minus 34th. That's that's zero, basically, right? That That's because I was off by a little too much, okay? But this is going to be going to zero. If you were really accurate with it, go to second calc, go to uh, zero again, go a little left, boom, hit enter, go a little right, okay, great, hit enter, guess in the middle, right? Put it exactly now as best you can in the middle, good, hit enter, and look, it'll give you the exact answer, all right? So don't get too crazy. You don't have to be like exact, 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 exact. You can be off by a little bit. I was off probably by a little too much. I shouldn't have aired that much, but you get the idea. So one of the x-intercepts is going to be literally the coordinate 0, 0. The same thing as the y-intercept. That's what we were mentioning. Now let's find this other one over here, which is on the graph in this particular location. So now hit second calc again. Go to 2 for to find your 0. And now you got to go left bound. So bring this over a little bit more. Now remember, left bound relative to the point of interest. So this is left of the point where it crossed the x. So hit enter. Okay. Then bring it over. Oh, I went maybe a little too far right there. That's to the right. Now hit enter and now guess. That looks good enough to me. You might say it's not exact. It's fine. It's really close enough, honestly. You'll see. Hit enter. And boom. It tells you now, and that's what we might have suspected if you realize that each of these tick marks represents a unit of one, that we were one, two. We would have intersected, or the graph intersects the x-axis at x equals two. So we, that's our that's the value of our second intercept. We have two comma zero, and that's it. These are the, going to be the intercepts. Okay, here's the intercept. Here's the intercept. So the next thing would be to find the end behaviors, and we can also use the graph for this as well. So maybe let me move this up a little bit. Okay. So now what I'm going to do? Let's go to the graph and let's zoom out. Okay. So go to zoom, hit number three, zoom out, and enter. Fair enough. Look at this graph now. Let me actually delete. Let me delete this one on the page. All right. If you just, if we just now analyze this particular graph, notice what's happening. This function is going on and on and on forever in these directions, right? So as x is moving further and further to the left, meaning as you're going, as x is going to negative infinity, the function's value, or aka the y value, is moving more and more in the positive y direction, right? Meaning it's moving into positive infinity. And that takes care of the end behavior on the left side of the graph, but you also got to do the end behavior on the right side of the graph. So as x is moving out further and further to the right, meaning as x is becoming more and more, uh, or is becoming larger in the positive direction, then the function's value, the y value, is also becoming more and more positive in the y direction or it's going to positive infinity. These would then be the end behaviors. All right, and that's how you would use the graph to do both. So now let's delete, oh, no, I don't wanna resize that, I wanna delete it. So let's do now the second example, and let's see if we can you know, run through this one a little bit. So go to y equals, clear it on out, and type it in. So x, parenthesis, then x minus three. So we got x minus three, close the parenthesis, open the parenthesis, then it's x plus three. Great. All right, hit graph. Cool. So we get this thing, right? Now, this is probably good enough to analyze. The important points of interest now are going to be, just so we're clear, this point here, this point here, and this point here. Okay. Every All three spots is where it crosses the x-axis, as you can clearly see. And only in this middle spot is where it crosses the y-axis. Okay. I know I didn't draw it exactly on, but yeah, there you go. That's a little better. So we should have one y-intercept, and actually that should always be the case if you're dealing with a function. It should only have y and one y-intercept because it has to pass the vertical line test. If you're not sure what that is, check out some of our prior videos in pre-calculus. Now, um, all I need to do here is utilize the same methods, okay? So let's delete this for now, and let's go back to the calculator. Let's find the y-intercept first. So remember, go to second calc, hit number one, and hit enter. X has to be zero for the y-intercept, so hit enter. Oh, look, it's the same thing again, and we kind of anticipated that, right? So the y-intercept here is going to be the same exact coordinate. It's going to be zero, zero, meaning it's at the origin. We also know, since it crosses the x-axis at that same place, that that's going to be one of the x-intercepts also. So I'm just going to write zero, zero. Now let's find the x-intercept on the left-hand side over here. So go to second 
calc or second trace, whatever you want to call it. Go down to zero, hit enter. Okay. Bring your point now to the left of that intercept. Okay. To the left of the point of interest, hit enter. Now bring it to the right. That's good. Hit enter. Now guess, just come close. That's now you might say, oh my goodness, wait, I can't get it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Just hit enter. And there you go. Right. There's the other X intercept. Y has to be zero, by the way, in order for the, in order for it to be an X intercept. So just like, just like I might not have uh, fully explained that, um, in order for, in order for it to be an, an X intercept, if you notice the Y's have to be zero. Okay, the Y's have to be zero. In order for it to be a Y intercept, the X has to be zero. Okay, I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, but it, it does work. And in prior videos, I went into detail on that. Let's now find the uh, intersection point all the way on the right. So go to second calc. Okay, do number two. Hit no, no, no. Hit enter, Andrew. You did it too fast. Clear it out. Go to second calc again. Number two. Hit enter. What are you doing? What are you doing? Clear again. My brain is on overload. Hit number two. Okay, it did it for you. Now, go over, bring it to the leftmost point of that intersection point of interest. Now you hit enter, go to the right, hit enter, and now just guess somewhere in the middle. That's close enough, go for it. There you go again, right? So here now the value is going to be positive three comma zero. And those are the intercepts, okay, X and Y. Now what we can do is we can determine the end behavior. All right, so if you wanna zoom, zoom out a little bit, go hit number three, so you can get a maybe bigger view of the graph. All right, now if you notice this particular graph, what's happening, so let's take it and let's bring it on in, all right? So if we can look at this carefully, the function's going all the way down here and it's going all the way up there. So as X is moving further and further to the left, in other words, as X is going to negative infinity, the Y value of the function or the F of X value is going to negative, it's going all the way down, going to go to negative infinity, all right? Similarly, if we look at it on the opposite side, as X is going more and more, uh, as X is becoming more and more positive, I should say, as it's becoming more and more positive, it's going to positive infinity. The F of X value will then also be going to positive infinity. It's going all the way on up. So it's going to positive infinity. And these would then be the end behaviors, all right? So that's kind of how you do both. Um, yeah, and that's, that's kind of it. That's how you use the calculator, all right? So I hope this video helped you guys. And uh, if it did, give us a hand, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll see you soon. I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.